After years of being far away from his hometown for work and study reasons, Tuma finally comes back home. However, he feels like he has lost touch with all of his school friends ever since he left. Having no clue whatsoever of their whereabouts or what they're doing with their lives, he stands clueless of who to reach out to. But he remembers that his childhood friends, or in other words, his best friend Kyoko is still in town and lives at her parents' house. Relief passes over him, since now at least he could see a familiar face and find out where his other classmates are and how her life is going so far. He recalls her feisty and lively personality that always used to get his head spinning. All the time she would scream at him and keep him on his toes, in a good way of course. Not to mention, her vibrant personality made her become very famous among the boys as well. So, he expects nothing less than for her to have had a few boyfriends by now, or maybe she's even married already. She must be a full-fledged woman by now, and Tuma prays in his heart that maybe puberty has made her a bit more feminine. With these thoughts in mind, he makes his way towards her house. But while walking, he sees her silhouette right in front of him, and recognizing his best friend, he calls out her name. A rather frightened and delicate girl turns around and catches Tuma's eye, and with a feeble and surprised voice, asks why he is here. Shock hits Tuma like a truck, and he can't wrap his head around what has happened to his dear old best friend. Her messed up pink hair, her weak voice, and overall worn out clothes go completely against her past personality. Tuma can't help but worry about her and if she's alright. In fact, what he had imagined in his mind of what Kyoko could have been is the direct opposite of what he's seeing before him. This is not the person he used to know. Tuma's mind can't grasp the real reason behind Kyoko's change, and he felt that it would be better if he should just sit and talk to her and understand from her perspective the reason behind the drastic change. Trying to get some answers, he decides to take her to the coffee shop that they would go to together in their childhood. But the frightened and timid Kyoko refrains from entering and tells him that she can't possibly enter, since she has no money and prepares to leave. Tuma gets the idea that maybe she didn't have a job at the moment, and instead offers to buy her coffee since a coffee wouldn't be that expensive, and it's the least he could do for her. They sit together, and Tuma prepares to ask her about what happened in her past, but he can plainly see that she was in no mood to talk, and was very tense. He also notices her studded ears, the black mask covering her face, and her hair that has not been managed at all. And, well, the fact that she is immensely grown in many places. Tuma feels that she is frightened of him since she avoids eye contact and is always folding her arms around her chest, as if trying to protect herself from something that isn't even there. Thinking to himself, Tuma assumes that Kyoko herself must know what is wrong with her, and that she just isn't the same cheery and excited girl that she once was. The server rings the bell, and their dessert is served. Two parfaits are served to them, and Kyoko's eyes are filled with surprise as she eyes the delicious dessert sitting at an arm's distance from her. Tuma tells her how they both used to order parfait in the past, and their love for it, so he ordered it for both of them. A bit shy, but happy to eat again, Kyoko agrees with him about her love for it. Tuma knew if he questioned her about the past and the events that led to who she is now, he might never get to meet her again, and his opportunity to get back with his best friend would be lost. Trying to make conversation, he tells her how hard it is to order the parfait as a single man alone, and that he is glad she chose to give him company. Kyoko replies that she feels like she isn't making any effort, and so their little meetup goes by as dryly as possible. But it doesn't bother our protagonist, since he is out for a mission, and that mission is to uncover the truth behind his friend's sudden change of personality. The sun sets over the horizon, and the two make their way out. Weirdly enough, Tuma doesn't feel bad that their conversation was dry and unproductive. He wasn't able to get the information that he wanted, and nor was Kyoko, feeling less scared than she was before. But before he could realize it, Kyoko's rejection and not planning to meet him again faded through his mind, and it seems like there could still be some hope, like a shining bright light in a dark empty tunnel. Maybe he could still get his friend back. Tuma tells her absentmindedly that he would be around for a while, and was hoping for a positive reply back from her, which luckily, he does get back. Kyoko tells him that she would also be around, even though it's really logical that she doesn't have any other place to go, nor does she have a job that she would be busy in. She tells him hesitantly that she doesn't have any work to do, which is probably the only thing she has said so far, and also tells him that now she would be heading back home. Tuma recalls the past. Whenever the two would part ways during their school days, Kyoko would land a strong kick on her butt. At the time, he would find it absolutely annoying that she did it. But now that she's changed, Tuma actually misses it. Well, they both have become proper adults after all, is what he tells himself as he slowly makes his way towards his home. Kyoko stands behind and stares at Tuma with her wide eyes that after many years now glow of amazement and a slight touch of happiness. The wind pushes her hair away, little magical lights float around her, and we are met with the image of a rather happy Kyoko. Kyoko makes her way back home and opens the front door. Entering her rather messed up and out of place parents' house, she makes her way to her room. Taking off her pants, she throws them to one side of the room, and slowly also throws away her shirt to get into the shower. 
Scrubbing her body from left to right, Kyoko's dainty, delicate, but rather big body goes through a series of scrubs before she gets into the shower. The warm water washes off the soap and residue that is stuck to her soft body, and forms bubbles on the shower floor. She recalls the farewell she just had a few hours ago with her childhood friend Tuma. Images of him waving his arm as he slowly makes his way away from her, his dark hair, his delicate way of talking to her, and their rather quiet but beautiful first meeting, where she gets to relive her past of eating parfait. The beautiful thoughts beat through her shocking pink-covered head as she sits on her bathroom floor, naked and happy. The steam covers her body, her hair wet and not tangled like they used to be. Kyoko lets her cheeks rest on her hands, and she starts blushing a crimson rose color, which perfectly complements her pink-colored hair. Looks like she must have had a wonderful day. The morning after Tuma returns to his parents' house, he sees rain pouring down through his room's window. The weather does not look favorable at all for our protagonist to leave his warm, comfy house and venture out. Planning to spend his day lounging around the house, he makes himself coffee and moves around with a book in hand. The sound of rain makes the house feel pleasant and even somewhat nostalgic. Guess he must be feeling nostalgia in the pit of his stomach ever since he came back to his hometown. He moves around in his room and looks out of his window, only to see Kyoko with an umbrella and a raincoat hanging around near the entryway. Tuma thinks maybe she has come to visit him, but hasn't made any attempts to enter their place or ring a bell. Which is nothing new, since she could be feeling hesitant to meet his parents and the meeting could become very awkward as well. Back in the past, she also used to avoid entering his house, and would shout from outside to make poor Tuma race out of his own house. Seems like she hasn't entirely changed. Tuma takes out an umbrella, wears his raincoat, and with a smile on his face, leaves his house to talk to Kyoko. He greets her, and tells her how he is bored, and maybe the two should wander around somewhere and give each other company. The surprised but rather happy Kyoko happily agrees to go anywhere with him, as she nods in agreement. For a reason Tuma can't understand, he feels very happy that he's able to meet Kyoko again, and also relieved that she looks a lot better than when he had met her a few days ago. Under the night sky and pouring rain, the two set off without any destination in mind, or a known endpoint. This could pretty much look beautiful if the two were lovers and this was a romantic anime, but it isn't. As always, Kyoko is heavily concerned that no one notices her and hasn't taken off her mask throughout the walk. The reason behind her uneasiness and scared personality is still unknown to us as we progress further and further into the chapters. Kyoko looks left and right, hoping that no one comes too close to her and in return finds out about her. Thus, Tuma decides to go to a place that does not have a lot of people, and in this way makes her feel more comfortable. Tuma notices a karaoke place up ahead, and asks Kyoko if she would like to go there. A bit hazed, but she reluctantly goes with him. It was still pouring outside, so they entered the karaoke room together. The room feels a lot better, warm and homely. However, Kyoko isn't feeling relaxed and wraps her arms around her chest again. Tuma recalls how many years it has been since they last went to a karaoke room together and enjoyed their hearts out. He remembers how she would drag him by the ear into the karaoke room when they were in high school. Sadly, times have changed, and Kyoko isn't the same cheerful and excited girl that he once knew. He watched her sit quietly on her side, not talking much and hardly even making an effort to make conversation with him, making him feel like she is a statue. Kyoko looks down, unable to make eye contact with Tuma, and blanks when it comes what to say to him. Tuma makes the move and asks her if she would like to sing something with him. Taken aback, Kyoko asks in a confused manner about what to sing. Tuma thinks to himself, is this girl for real? They are in a karaoke place, of course they should do some singing, if nothing else. In the end, they didn't get into the karaoke spirit, and instead of singing their hearts out, they ended up using the time to chat a bit. It's still confusing to us about what the two could possibly be chatting about. Kyoko isn't one to share a lot about herself, and is very much to herself. Finally, she starts talking, and asks Tuma if it's okay for him to be hanging out with her. A bit confused, he asks her why would it not be okay to hang out with her. Granted that she is a bit messed up and weird, but without a doubt, we all know that Kyoko is really beautiful. Flustered from head to toe, Kyoko brings up the courage to tell him that since she is older and more mature now in multiple ways, if he has a girlfriend, she wouldn't be happy if she saw him hanging out with her. Not to mention she doesn't have a boyfriend, so it's completely fine if she hangs out with her alone in a karaoke room, where they aren't really karaokeing. The amount of courage it has taken her to say these lines is something we will never realize, but can see, as she has turned rose pink from head to toe. Confused, and now a bit pissed off as well, Tuma asks her what type of flighty person she thinks he is, and that too assumes that he has a girlfriend, when in fact, he doesn't have a girlfriend or anything like that whatsoever. Kyoko gives him a small, embarrassed laugh back, but we could all see the excitement and happiness being emitted between her smile and her eyes. Telling Tuma that she doesn't think one bit bad of him at all, but deep down feeling a stomach full of butterflies. Tuma tells her that it wasn't the nicest response he expected from her, but he will let this one slide for now. 
Kyoko is busy fidgeting and nibbling on her fingers, which are also burning right out of embarrassment. Sweat continues to drip down her thighs and hands, even though it isn't very hot in the room. She apologizes for the half-hearted response and continues to apologize to him. Tuma, on the other hand, is a little relieved to hear that Kyoko doesn't have a boyfriend either, and maybe things could work out between them. Kyoko smiles, a happy smile, blushing from her cheeks and tiny, imaginative smoke being emitted from her nose. Guess someone's in love. With the whole relationship status out of the way, knowing that both of them are single, the two start talking to each other. Kyoko is much more communicative now, and is able to talk without reservations. It seems she was feeling uneasy this whole time, knowing that if Tuma was in a relationship, her being around would mess everything up for him and their friendship as well. Tuma loved the fact that Kyoko is now happily talking to him, except for one clear fact that makes him feel uncomfortable. She seems to be very close to him. The two have been close to each other ever since they were kids, and have been together through thick and thin. But for some reason, Tuma feels flustered that she is super close to him. He could feel himself tensing up. Suddenly, the room also starts feeling stuffy and hot to him as well, and he could feel Kyoko getting closer and closer to him. Kyoko slowly asks him if he doesn't have a girlfriend, but her words are cut short when the phone in the karaoke room starts to ring. Their time in the room has elapsed and they must leave to give it away to other customers. Just when things were progressing between these two, it had to be interrupted by the sound of a phone. The two make their way out of the room, and they see that the rain has stopped pouring followed by a clear sky and many birds flying. Tuma comments about how the rain has stopped, to which Kyoko agrees with him. But we all know that she still feels sad that her moment to ask him a certain question has elapsed, and she may not get the opportunity again anytime soon. The two make their way back after a very tense and rather hot few hours in the karaoke room. Kyoko and Tuma leave the karaoke room after a very heated and intimate moment with each other. She thinks to herself about how Tuma has always been that way ever since her childhood. He never looked like he would think twice about what he would say and was always carefree. Not to mention, he was very considerate about her feelings. Even now, he is the same as he ever was. While looking in the mirror, Kyoko stares back at her reflection and watches the tangled hair, the awful clothing that hasn't been managed at all, and finally the broken hair pieces that are still around her fingers. She stares at her reflection and thinks how her best friend hasn't aged much since the past, whereas she has become into a different person, not even one she could recognize. Negative thoughts fill poor Kyoko's mind, and she wraps herself around with a blanket and sorrows. Calling herself pathetic, along with a number of awful names, she reprimands herself for becoming this monster. She repeats these again and again, convincing herself that she would not show her face to Tuma again and would only hold him back from leading a happy, prosperous life. Moments later, she hears a buzzing sound on her phone, and she has received a message. Who could it possibly be? No one ever messages her this late. Picking up her phone, she realizes it's Tuma's message and remembers how they had exchanged numbers when they had met earlier, since he felt it would be easier to stay in contact that way. With trembling fingers and anxiety filling her up, Kyoko opens his message, where she reads something totally not what she had expected. Tuma thanks her for meeting him, and even asks her to meet him next Saturday, since he would be free then and they could go out somewhere. She stares at the message blankly for a few seconds, digesting what she has just read, unable to even grasp the moment. And then, a big, happy, content smile forms on her delicate face. All her fears, all her anxiety suddenly is washed away. She could not have dreamed of being treated this way, and let alone by her childhood friend. Will Kyoko ask Tuma out, and will the two best friends get to take it to the next step? But more importantly, what trail of events have led Kyoko to end up so different that even Tuma could not recognize her? Friday evening has arrived, and that means their date is hours away from happening. Tuma, while working in his office, remembers Kyoko telling him that she doesn't have a job and is pretty much at home all the time, so he invites her for some drinks that evening. This would be their first time drinking after so many years of being apart in time and in personalities. Not getting distracted, he pushes the meetup thought aside and pays close attention to his work so he could easily wrap up everything before their 7 o'clock meetup. Meanwhile, Kyoko waits outside the rendezvous area, where people move left to right minding their own business. She looks at her phone and sees the time being 6.48, only 12 more minutes to go before she would get to meet Tuma. However, there is one thing that we find out, and it's the fact that she arrived 2 hours and 10 minutes early. Well, no wonder she has nothing better to do at home. Kyoko fidgets with her phone and fingers, waiting patiently as well as impatiently for Tuma to come meet her, eyes filled with eagerness as sweat drips down her forehead. Tangled pink strands of hair fly with the blowing of the wind. Tuma meets up with Kyoko finally, and the two go to an izakaya. Kyoko asks what she could get, since she is the lightweight and can't drink too much. The news that she is a lightweight is received as unexpected by Tuma, since he expected her to be more than just a lightweight according to her, well, body size. Nevertheless, he voices out his thoughts and tells her how he didn't expect her to be a light drinker, but rather a big drinker. 
Kyoko apologizes for not meeting his expectations, to which he tells her not to apologize, and she apologizes again for what she said earlier. The two stare at each other, and Tuma breaks the ice by asking her what's up, since she has been staring at him rather meekly. Picking up the confidence again, Kyoko asks him if she got wasted and loses consciousness, would he look after her? All the while, she slowly touches her chest, while simultaneously blushing. Taking it very casually, Tuma tells her he would not have any other choice, and would in fact take care of her, asking her to leave it to him to be there for her. Kyoko laughs embarrassingly and happily agrees to have drinks that night. Something doesn't feel right here for some reason. We are met by the sight of empty glasses clinking against each other, and mind you, these are not just a few glasses. Kyoko is seen unconscious, snoring to herself. Tuma realizes that she really was a light drinker and didn't expect her to go down in less than an hour as they just started drinking. Kyoko's tangled pink hair covers her sleeping face. Her arms wrapped around her stomach and her face burned a slight tone of red due to the effect of the drinks. Tuma looks at Kyoko's delicate body that is very much at peace, telling himself that she was truly enjoying drinking with him and even went all out, which has resulted in her falling asleep. Still, she looks really different, much more than he would have expected her to be. Her once thin, fragile body is now far bigger and bustier than he would have imagined. Drinking another glass of beer, Tuma's mind starts thinking of what had happened to his childhood friend that has resulted in her being this way. This is a completely different person. A shy, timid, and quiet person in personality, and her bodily figure has also changed, making her look somewhat attractive to Tuma. His mind starts assuming different scenarios of what could have happened to poor Kyoko, but he shakes these thoughts away. He pays for the drinks, reassuring himself that the thoughts that have crawled into his mind are not true at all, and thus moves towards Kyoko. He picks up her body that is without a doubt a lot heavier than he would have wanted. He tells himself to not pry anymore into her life, since it's none of his business and rightly so, as he knows nothing of what she went through in her past and what happened to her that resulted in her being this way. Knowing that she has lived her life in whatever her past is, it isn't of any concern for him to know, and so diverting these thoughts in other directions, Tuma carries his childhood friend back to her home, as per his promise to her before they had started drinking. Tuma carries his friend, who was knocked out by the few drinks that she could take in less than an hour. While walking on the street, he could hear different people passing their unwanted comments on her and him. A boy and a girl are amazed that she's being lugged away home right in front of everyone in the open street. Another person comments on her nasty, messed up, tangled hair that is all over the place and makes her look like a bimbo. No one could imagine looking like her and leaving their house in such a state. One even goes as far as commenting on how it's good that she's a psycho chick, since her appearance and the way she's being carried by her so-called boyfriend won't affect her character, since it's already stooped so low. The most awful and heartbreaking comments are being passed by random strangers, who know nothing about who the two are and what problems and issues they've faced in their life. All they know about is commenting and passing judgment on them. Tuma in his head tells them to shut up, anger rushing into his veins and sweat dripping down his chin. How could they so easily and happily pass judgment on a girl who could be going through so many problems in her life and they haven't a clue about it? Sure, she was at a fragile point once in her past where she was on the verge of failing every test in school, but that's still not a good enough reason for them to treat her that way. Sadness and hurt fills Tuma's head, and he realizes another thing that makes him no different than the rest of them. Sadly, he also doesn't know much about Kyoko-kun, which makes him even worse since they were childhood friends and used to play with each other for years. But ever since he left, he completely forgot about everyone, about all of his friends, family, and that's why he sadly doesn't know much about Kyoko. This makes him feel very sad and lonely as he carries his childhood friend slowly towards her home. Meanwhile, Kyoko, half awake and half in her senses, produces a weak but very happy and embarrassed smile, since she could never have imagined being carried by her childhood friend whom she really likes. Tears also trickle down her thin eyelids. Maybe it's hurt after listening to all those awful things said by the passerbys, or they are tears of happiness for what she is experiencing right now, which is far more important than anything in the world. Carrying Kyoko is no easy task, especially from all the way at the place they were drinking at to her home. Tuma decides to have a small stop near a bench and talks to himself, since he thought Kyoko was fast asleep, telling himself that now is the time for a little break. Kyoko starts talking after dozing off through their walk and apologizes for being too heavy. Tuma is a bit embarrassed and shakes off the idea of her being too heavy and directly the topic of questioning if she was awake all along. Still a bit shaky from the effect of the drinks, Kyoko is sweaty and wobbly the whole way home, which she didn't do at all when she was carried. Tuma tells her not to worry so much and reminds her of his promise to her that he would take care of her, side by side being worried about her health, asking her if she's feeling better. Kyoko, with drunk-filled eyes, reassures him that she is feeling reasonably better, or at least that's what she thinks she feels. Positive that she isn't feeling 100% herself, he rushes to the nearest store to get her some water, leaving her by herself. Kyoko looks at Tuma with sad eyes, as he goes and returns back moments later with a bottle of water. 
He returns and hands her the bottle of water, telling her to take it and refresh herself. Kyoko thanks him with a soft voice. He tells her that they are very close to her place, and asks if she has the strength to walk the rest of the way with him. Looks like carrying her all the way was more than enough for poor Tuma, and maybe the option of her walking looks more reasonable right now. Kyoko purses her lips, showing disapproval for the idea. Her face now turns a light shade of red, as she continues to mumble to herself. Rather confused, a sweaty Tuma asks her what she's trying to say to him. Kyoko picks up the courage and finally says it, telling him she doesn't want to go home yet and if she could stay at his place for the night. Looks like the power of getting drunk makes you do and ask all sorts of things. But it seems she fully meant what she said and really did not want to go back to her house and instead would have preferred if she stayed the night with her childhood friend. We are taken back in time and get to see the past life of Tuma and Kyoko during their high school years together. Kyoko's loud voice can be heard miles away as she screams a greeting to Tuma. Tuma looks out his window and sees Kyoko, with a confused voice asks her what's up. With a happy smile but a voice filled with a little annoyance, asks him what he means by what's up and that it's summer vacation. Here we also get to see Kyoko not entering his house and instead shouting from the driveway. Guess she hasn't changed much from that time since she still doesn't enter his house. Eyes closed and a huge smile forming on her face, she carries a donut shaped floaty on her arm and motions Tuma to go with her to the pool. Goggles on her neck, rosy cheeks, a tote bag on her arm, and an aura that just screams of happiness and positivity. The two make their way to the pool, and Kyoko tells the real reason why she wanted Tuma to come along with her. She actually wanted to go down by the river, but was warned by the elders that they were kids and could not go alone since it was too dangerous. Even though, according to her, she felt it to be perfectly fine. But we all know that her childish energy is just getting the better of her for now. Nonetheless, she sees the pool and without thinking twice, plunges into the pool with utter happiness and joy. A rather worried Tuma screams back at her, telling her to not rush and just jump into the pool. The elders would get mad at him too this way. This is the version of Kyoko that Tuma so perfectly remembers. Once middle school starts for them, the energetic Tuma is made to wear a skirt with her uniform, and boy does she look pissed at being made to wear it. Tuma sees her for the first time in a skirt and casually tells her that it doesn't suit her at all. Angry Kyoko looks at him with killer looks and tells him that she has zero control over this. Middle school has just started and all she can do right now is only obey the rules and that makes even tomboy girls like her dress up in skirts. However, she did manage to wear gym shorts underneath her flimsy skirt and flashes her shorts by lifting her skirt in front of her childhood friend. A rather surprised Tuma tells her to not flip up her skirt and show him, since it's out of her manners and embarrassing as well. She still wishes she could at least wear pants underneath the skirt. Tuma laughs and tells her that she now looks like a full-fledged girl and chuckles. Kyoko screams back at him that he should be able to recognize her just by her face and not the clothing she wears. Swinging her bag up and down, she happily asks him what he has planned for the clubs and which one he's likely to join. Tuma, not being the sporty type, tells her that he would like to go for basketball or volleyball which only makes her call his choice boring. We get to see another flashback into the two's past where Tuma walks home on a dark rainy day. Kyoko runs after him with her bag blocking the rain from getting her wet. She asks Tuma if she could share his umbrella until they get back home and scooches in with him. He tells her how they are now in high school and this just seems to be a bit embarrassing, to which she questions his modesty to care about being embarrassed or letting his friend get soaked in the rain. Kyoko realizes that they will be moving to different universities in spring, and that part still hasn't completely digested for her. An idea hits her, and she asks him, when was the last time they went out to get parfaits together? This idea is met by a smile from Tuma, who agrees with it, and they both tease each other about getting fat and not having the opportunity again like this once they go their separate ways. We are back in reality, and Tuma sees a hotel named Starbucks. He then looks at Kyoko, having an idea in mind of what to do now, since she didn't want to go back home. The Kyoko he once knew isn't the same anymore. Both her appearance and personality have changed, making her a completely different person now. Somewhere along the way, his childhood friend whom he loved so much has disappeared. A nagging feeling deep inside Tuma makes him think that. Tuma and Kyoko hold each other's hands intensely, the bedsheets creased by their bodies as the two spend the night at the hotel. The next morning, Tuma and Kyoko walk together back home. Tuma's mind is filled with multiple thoughts and he is unable to look straight and instead looks at Kyoko, making him bump headfirst into a sign. This makes Kyoko laugh and he realizes that she was there all along watching him. Between fits of laughter, Kyoko asks what the heck he's doing, to which he embarrassingly tells her that he wasn't looking where he was going. The clock ticks past 3.30 a.m. It's the middle of the night and Kyoko still can't sleep properly. She changes into her tracksuit and decides to go out and get some fresh air to clear her head. The night is dark and only the street lights light up the way. Kyoko jogs down the street. Panting immensely as she stops to rest, she cannot feel her legs anymore, even though back in high school, this was the path she used to take for her warm-up runs. 
how times have changed. She holds her legs and sits down, thinking how it's been so long since she went last for her run. Her stamina sure has gone down. It flashes before her mind how every day she looks at herself. She knows she can't redo her past. Whatever has happened has happened. How once she was the happy and energetic Kyoko, but the circumstances that came across her completely transformed her, and she wasn't as strong as she thought she would be. She tried to change, but nothing went like the way they thought it would. In the end, her parents decided to bring her back home, since she couldn't do it herself anymore. Clenching the sleeve of her tracksuit, she tells herself how despite her dark past and present state of mind, he didn't judge her, and didn't even ask anything about it. She recalls the time she spent with him in the hotel, their hands clutching to each other tight, not willing to let go. He was so kind to her and so warm. She realizes that she has completely fallen for Tuma. Tuma lies on his bed. He used to think of Kyoko as a sister, but then, it all changed when they both went and did that in the hotel. Well, that's life. You never know what could happen. This makes him feel very restless. And of course, it had to be a time like this when there is no sign of life from Kyoko. His phone lays silent on his bed. On the other end, Kyoko is asleep in her messed up room. Fast asleep, Kyoko wakes up to the ping sound of her phone's message and instantly gets up when she finds out it's Tuma, who wants to meet and go shopping. Frantically getting ready, she jumps into the shower and looks for her clothes in her messed up drawer. She hasn't washed her usual clothes yet. How will she manage to meet him now? She finally gets to meet him and apologizes for making him wait so long. Tuma is speechless when he lays eyes on Kyoko, who wears a very beautiful dress, not like her usual clothes. He compliments her dress, which makes her smile and blush, and the two make their way to the mall. They go to Rion Mall, and Tuma tells her how it's been a few years since he was last here, which is the same case for Kyoko as well. Tuma decides to take a lap around the mall with her, and she happily agrees. They visit a shop, and Tuma remembers last month was her birthday, and despite being late, he decides to get her a present. Since everything was on sale, he got her a new wallet, but sadly, it was a new item and no discount was applied. Defeated, Tuma still buys it for her without complaining. Smiling from ear to ear, Kyoko thanks him for it and even tells him how much she loves it. She uses it straight away, and while transferring her things from her old wallet to the new one, we get to see her being in a tough spot, since she doesn't have any money or cards, screaming the fact that she is unemployed. We can't wait to find out more about how things proceed with these two and what dark secrets lie in Kyoko's past that made her this way. The day filled with countless memories and fun games has come to an end. The night sky is filled with sparkling stars as Toma and Kyoko return from their unforgettable trip to the Rion Mall, which both of them hadn't visited for years. Toma remarks on how they had intended to spend an hour or two hanging out, but ended up spending the entire day together. Even Kyoko mentions that for the first time in her life, she couldn't tell how time passed by so quickly. This basically shows that both of them had the time of their lives and are openly admitting it. Tuma is dropping Kyoko off at her home in his car, and the entire journey is filled with silence. But this silence isn't of any awkward kind, it's the type you enjoy. Kyoko has spaced out in her imagination, and her eyes, which used to be dead when Tuma met her, are now sparkling with anticipation. While Tuma is busy driving, Kyoko can't stop thinking about how he got her a present, despite the fact that it was long ago and went as far to gift her a present which was an expensive wallet. Throughout the journey, she thinks about the sweet memories as if trying to carve them deep into her bones so that she may never forget them. How she and Tuma had lunch together, played arcade games, and how he acted like a five-year-old when he couldn't win the award. Most importantly, she got to visit fashion shops that she could have never imagined ever going to, given that she's extremely broke. Kyoko starts feeling a little like her old self again. It's not just her eyes that now have life in them. Suddenly, out of the blue, she is the first to break the silence. While sweating heavily, she asks Tuma that he must have work tomorrow. It wasn't a question, but it wasn't really a statement either. It was almost as if she wanted Tuma to say no. Tuma responds late. Maybe like Kyoko, his train of thought was revisiting the memories of the day again. He asks her to repeat the question, and then answers as soon as he realizes what she asked. Of course he has work tomorrow. Kyoko doesn't really know how to reply to that because she said something impulsively without any follow-up prepared. After struggling with words, she just says that it must be tough. Tuma has millions of question marks all over his head, because he has no idea what she meant by that. Perhaps he's gotten used to that by now, given how mysterious she always is. The rest of the journey, oblivious Tuma just tries to keep guessing what Kyoko meant by her question by putting two and two together. However, the destination arrives before the answer does, and Tuma gets ready to bid her farewell with a wholesome smile on his face. Before he could finish his sentence and thank her for hanging out, he feels warm lips on his and a hand on his shoulder. Again, acting on impulse, the shy and timid Kyoko leaned in for a kiss. His face turns red with embarrassment, and she tells him that she had fun. Then, like a flash of light, she disappears from the car. It's not just Kyoko who is completely flustered, but Tuma's face too has turned into a tomato, and the only word he can get out is a fainted, yeah. And then, as if he owns a Ferrari, he accelerates his car away. 
However, Kyoko doesn't move an inch from where he dropped her off. She has a rather sad expression on her face, which even Tuma can spot from miles away in his rearview mirror. In an inner monologue with himself, he begs her to stop making that expression because he has no idea what that means. Suddenly, it starts making sense. She just wanted them to stay together a bit longer. She asked him about his job, but since she is unemployed, she couldn't finish the sentence. As soon as Tuma understands the entire situation, he immediately hits the brake pedal, and the car comes to a screeching halt. Almost instantly, Kyoko's eyes light up. While reversing the car, Tuma consoles his guilty conscience that he will work something out for his job later. But right now, that's not the priority. The priority is his friend, whom he thought he had lost forever. He tries to explain to her why he's back, but then realizes that it is self-explanatory and asks her to hop back in. It's 10.15 in the morning, and Tuma looks like he hasn't slept for years. To make his mood worse, his colleagues keep teasing him by mentioning Kyoko. They ask him if she's really his childhood friend, given how close the both of them are. Some of his colleagues are even jealous. They can't believe that he was able to pull a girl with such good looks and a body. Although their comments are putting him on the edge of his seat, he still lacks unfazed. He pretends like he has a hard time trying to remember whom they are talking about, and then casually mentions Kyoko's name. One of the colleagues asks if his childhood friend has a boyfriend. Tuma's response to that simply gives, I don't know and I don't care energy. Some of his colleagues act like love gurus, and give him advice that if he doesn't start showing interest in her, he will lose his chance to get with such an ideal girl, who has everything one could ask for. Meanwhile, throughout the entire conversation, Tuma can't help but roll his eyes. He tries to clarify that he and Kyoko have known each other for as long as they can remember, and therefore, they don't like each other the way everyone is assuming. Tuma also adds that since Kyoko has a cheery personality, she can always easily look for a guy better than him and live a nice life. To him, there is no way he is anywhere in her picture. This is probably what he used to think in high school years as well. Hearing such cynical words, his colleagues start beating him up to knock some sense into him. Meanwhile, he just can't understand why his colleagues are bringing up Kyoko all of a sudden. This raises another important question. What really happened last night after Tuma picked up Kyoko? It is revealed that they spent the entire night embracing each other in their arms with Kyoko, calmly resting her head on the top of Tuma. The night faded away and the dawn broke. Tuma started changing into his job uniform and apparently Kyoko stood on her toes to kiss him. He dropped her off on his way to work and she cheerfully wished him luck for the job. While waving at him, she thought to herself how calm the entire night was. It had been a long time since she was able to sleep through the night and wake up during the day until she met Tuma again. She wondered if he is the reason why she was feeling different in a good way all of a sudden. A content smile crawled up on her face as she looked back at him driving away. However, soon reality kicked in and she remembered her empty wallet. She used the last bits of money she had saved and now it wouldn't be possible for her to hang out with Tuma. But she knows that she can't give up, now that it has started to feel good. While wondering what she should do next, she stumbled across a poster whose job description matched exactly what she was looking for. No experience needed, and no restrictions on hairstyle. Weeks have passed by, and Kyoko has been keeping herself busy with her new job. The once reserved and quiet girl has now become an experienced customer-oriented salesperson at a convenience store. She started working part-time here and got hired because nobody wanted to work the night shift and it was understaffed. The entire inspiration for starting to work was the fact that she wanted to be with Tuma more. She consoles herself that maybe by working regularly, she'd get used to it. 4am is when all the construction workers rush at the mart and poor Kyoko has to manage it all by herself. Once they leave, she takes a sigh of relief and appreciates herself for making it through another rush hour. The sky is still filled with stars and dawn is about to break soon. Suddenly, someone calls out her name, sending shivers down her spine. It's around 5am, who could it possibly be? She puts her guard up and turns around. She's shocked to see Tuma with his eyes half shut. While yawning, he greets Kyoko and tells her that he came to see how she's doing. He especially woke up early just to meet her. Given that he also has to work early in the morning, sleep must be something really precious to him. Yet, he was there, ready to sacrifice it for her. She tells him that her shift will be over in about 15 minutes. Although he is like a walking zombie right now, he still decides to wait for her outside. After her night shift is over, they both eat snacks while sky gazing. Kyoko probably got them the snacks from the mart. Tuma states that Kyoko's job looks pretty tough since she has to stay up throughout the night. Kyoko corrects him by saying that she couldn't find a more perfect job than this. She's already a night owl, so that's not an issue. The high pay is the icing on the cake. The sun rises slowly, filling the sky with billions of unique colors. It looks like Kyoko has gotten used to breaking the silence more often. She remarks how beautiful the weather is along with the sky. Tuma starts smiling and mentions the way the sky looks makes him feel some type of way. Whenever he feels down or struggles, he just looks at the sky and knows that everything will turn out to be alright. He starts blushing after exposing his raw feelings. Kyoko doesn't think it's weird at all, but rather admits that she feels the same. Tuma mentions that this is another bonus point for Kyoko's job that she gets to see this beautiful sight every day. This causes Kyoko to laugh openly, something that had to become so rare in her life. He then wishes her luck, and she promises to continue to keep working hard at her job. Almost a month passes by, just like that, and Kyoko receives her first paycheck. 
Although it isn't much, it means the world to her because it's her first time receiving one. The first person that comes to her mind is Tuma. She wants to repay him for giving her such a thoughtful gift. She grabs her granny's scooter and speeds away to the nearest shopping mall. Now that she has the money to buy something for him, the next big problem is, what should she buy? He bought her something really expensive and precious, so she wants to return the favor. She thinks about buying a shoulder bag, but then realizes that he never uses them. She wants to buy him something that he could use on a daily basis. The next thing that comes to her mind is a necktie. Of course, it would be a perfect gift for a businessman, but it wouldn't make things a bit weird between him and his colleagues who already tease them a lot. Then, she starts overthinking that maybe he would prefer a safe plane tie. She's caught up in her dilemma when a salesperson interrupts her train of thought and asks her if she's looking for a present to buy her boyfriend. The already panicked Kyoko starts sweating head to toe. She tries her best to explain that they're not a thing and have only been friends since childhood. Eventually, she starts stuttering and wonders if they're really not a thing. The saleswoman couldn't care less about her love life, so she starts recommending her good ties for an office. Kyoko thanks her for being so helpful, but unfortunately, she still can't decide. This takes her to old times, when buying a birthday present for Tuma was super easy. She'd just pack a bunch of snacks together and gift it to him. He would just happily accept whatever she threw at him. While the saleswoman was thinking, what the heck is wrong with this girl, Kyoko feels embarrassed for not being able to do something so simple. Suddenly, something catches her eye and she buys it instantly. Kyoko invites Tuma out for dinner, which is something that happens once every blue moon. Even Tuma is taken aback by this gesture of hers and specifically mentions it while smiling ear to ear. Kyoko immediately jumps to the point and reveals that she has something to give him. She pulls out a plastic bag and tells him that this present is in return for the gift he got her. Although Tuma tells her that there is no need for this, his face says otherwise. He is genuinely happy to receive something from Kyoko. It has been a long time since the last time she gifted him something, so it brings back old, refreshing memories. Apparently, she has bought him a business card holder from the same expensive brand as the wallet he gifted her. He remarks that he recently was thinking of replacing his old business card holder, so this gift is super useful. She says that this small piece of item cannot, in any way, be compared to the present he bought her. After knowing that Tuma really liked the gift, Kyoko takes a sigh of relief, while turning red from embarrassment. Tuma teases her that now both of them have matching items, just the way they did in elementary school. Kyoko recalls back then that they had a matching pencil case, and Tuma even remembers what the pencil box looked like. He also recalls how their classmates teased them for being lovebirds. Kyoko snickers, and mentions that although back then it used to be embarrassing, now having matching items makes her feel really happy. It looks like she might explode from anxiety while making the confession. Seeing Kyoko's expression makes Tuma so flustered that he bites his lip. After regaining his composure, he teases Kyoko for acting all cute out of the blue. At this compliment, Kyoko's smile is like that of a five-year-old with no worry in the world. Pure, wholesome, and honest. He then asks her if she slept well to do her night shift at the mart. She assures him that her sleep is complete and she still has time on her hands before her shift starts. Immediately, he asks her if she wants to hang out somewhere, and obviously, how could she deny it? Both of them could spend an entire day and night together, and it still won't be enough. Time just feels like a concept now that the two of them have started to get along. Just like that, an entire month passes by. Tuma takes a shower, and then informs his mother that the bath is free for her to use. He also tells her that he won't be home tomorrow night, so she should carefully close the main door. His mother also asks him where he will be again this time, and he just responds with karaoke and stuff. After that, he plops on his bed and starts doing research on nearby apartments. It looks like he's really had enough of living with his parents as a grown-up. The lowest price that he can find is 47,000 yen. During work hours, he quickly wraps up his tasks and seems to have something on his mind. The sun soon sets, and Tuma meets up with Kyoko. At nighttime, they both do their usual business before departing. In the car, Tuma tries to explain his dilemma to Kyoko. He stutters at first, but eventually finds the right words. He tells her that although sleeping over at her place is fun, he doesn't have full freedom yet since he is living with his parents. His mother keeps asking him about his whereabouts, and he believes it will be harder for him to hide it any longer. Kyoko misunderstands what Tuma was trying to get at, and assumes that she has been bothering him a lot by continuously asking him to come over. Tuma instantly corrects her that he absolutely enjoys every second he spends with her. He tells her that he's looking for a new apartment and asks her to move in with him. In her complete mess of a room, Kyoko is spaced out and keeps murmuring under her breath the idea of living together. Apparently, a few hours ago, when Tuma had asked her to move in with him, she was at a loss for words. She asked him to repeat what he just said. Tuma told her that it shouldn't be that surprising. When Kyoko claimed to be useless and a poor cook, Tuma reassured her that it doesn't matter. If he isn't going to live with her, who else could it be? Kyoko has a million butterflies in her stomach right now, and she's twisting and turning in her bed, thinking about everything Tuma said. She's so ecstatic that she hides her flustered face in the pillow and keeps kicking her bed. However, soon she starts worrying that maybe living together with him will expose a certain secret of hers that she has been trying to hide for so long. Kyoko is afraid that if Tuma finds out, he will lose interest in her. The secret is not revealed yet. Kyoko decides to calm her nerves down and decides to go out to get a breath of fresh air. 
While she's out for a walk, she notices a couple of kindergartners playing pretend and making a rice omelet. She thinks to herself that no matter how bad of a cook she is, she must be good at making rice omelets, which is a bare minimum. However, she forgets to oil the pan, and her hard work goes to waste. The end result is a burnt rice omelet. It seems like this would be Tuma's diet for the future. She snickers at the thought and promises to practice and try her best to become a good cook for Tuma. In a flashback, Kyoko, with her old hairstyle, intently stares at a drink and questions whether she should drink it or not. She looks sideways and seems to be sweating a lot. After thinking hard, she decides to drink it. She doesn't just drink it, she gulps down the entire glass in one shot. It seems like this flashback was actually Kyoko's dream. However, the way she wakes up shows that it was more like a nightmare. The eye bags under her eyes are darker than ever, and her eyes look like those of a traumatized person. There was something about that drink or her decision to go for it that it continues to shake Kyoko's inner peace to this day. Meanwhile, Tuma has been slacking off a bit at his place. With the drink in his hand, he is reclining on his sofa. Suddenly, his phone starts ringing. It's Kyoko's message. She wants to meet up with him tonight. Immediately, a smile crawls up on his face, and he thanks the heavens that he has off from work tomorrow. The sun sets, and Tuma makes his way towards Kyoko's place. Apparently, she had already been waiting for him outside, and slams her head against his chest before he could even greet her properly. She squeezes him in a hug and starts to cry heavily, while begging him to not hate her for being too weak. Tuma has absolutely no clue what's going on, and he's getting more and more worried. He spends the entire night taking peeks at Kyoko, who is crying even in her sleep. Before saying goodnight, he pats her head, and assures her that he could never hate her. It seems like we're now closer to the truth than ever. Soon, it is daybreak, and even the birds have awoken. The sky is a light shade of blue, and patches of the night that have just passed can be seen. Our protagonist, Tuma, eventually wakes after a peaceful sleep. The events of the previous night rush back, as he looks around for Kyoko, who he had gone to sleep staring at. His hair has fallen all over his eyes, which makes it a miracle that he can see through the thick mane of it. Turning to his right, he comes face to face with Kyoko, who is calmly watching him with a shy smile planted on her lips. Her peaceful expression indicates that she enjoyed a blissful slumber, which is a relief considering how anxious she was the night before. Strands of her hair have themselves at home on her face, which, instead of looking messy, makes her hair look all the more attractive. She wishes him a good morning. Ah, the dream of every man is to be awoken by such a heavenly sight. The two enjoy an intimate moment to begin their new day with a lot of positivity. They then freshen up, take a shower, and change into clean clothes. After all, they had their own lives to get onto as well. Having prepared a soothing cup of tea, Kyoko addresses the events of the previous night. Seated at the breakfast table, she apologizes to Tuma for her outburst. She explains that she had a bad dream that scared her and she came to the one person who brought her comfort. Fortunately, she did the right thing, as now she felt more at peace and is now prepared to take on another day. Furthermore, she also clarifies that she never used to have nightmares like this, which was why she was so horrified. Tuma listens in silence, with his face expressionless. He does not address what his girlfriend had confided in him, and instead asks her if she would accompany him to look for apartments. He had asked her a similar question before, but she had not given him an answer, so he resolved to just invite her out instead. He had decided to take the big step of moving in with her in a new home, so he wishes to have her by his side while he chooses the next place they will share. Kyoko is speechless for a second before agreeing to accompany him. The two visit a real estate agent, who Tuma had already provided with a list containing the requirements of the apartment they are looking for. The agent shortlists a few rooms that are up for rent according to his demands and takes them along to visit them. Almost like an old married couple, Tuma and Kyoko visit a number of apartments and are impressed with many of them. After an exhausting couple of hours, they eventually call it a day. They visit a cafe and have some refreshments while discussing what their options are so they would be on the same page. Tuma informs his girlfriend that the last room they visited was the one that stood out for him, and most surprisingly, Kyoko also agrees. She expresses her enthusiasm, saying that house hunting like this really excites her. Seeing his moment, Tuma touches on the sensitive topic that Kyoko told him in the morning. With a slight blush, he admits that even though he is not used to saying cringy things, he wants her to have nice dreams from now on. The only way she would have them is if they made new and more cheerful memories together. The girl is so touched by this loving gesture that she is left starstruck for a second. It seems that a cat has got her tongue, as she averts her gaze to hide the fact that she is as red as a beetroot. Clenching her fist, the only word she is able to utter is Tuma's name. Our protagonist really is great with words. With just two sentences, he has rendered his girlfriend speechless. After an exhausting day of house hunting, Kyoko finally returns home. She can hardly hide her anticipation that she would soon be moving in with the love of her life. This next stage would otherwise have made her very anxious, but the fact that Tuma is right by her side gives her comfort. Being around him makes her feel like she is constantly on cloud nine, and she hopes that taking this new step with him will allow them to go even further together. A huge mess meets her as she walks into her house. It seems as if the place has not been cleaned in the last decade. The sight embarrasses her, and she determines to put in the effort and make the place spick and span. After all, how would she take care of her and Tuma's house if she could not even take care of her own? 
who doesn't love an independent woman? Going through the clutter, she found multiple objects that she has been looking for the past few days. A sock that is missing from its pair, a hat that she thought was lost. Bit by bit, Kyoko goes through the heap. She comes across a drink coaster that takes her back to a memory many years back, when she and Tuma were still young and carefree. He asks her if she is done with her preparations for the move, and with an embarrassed shrug, she reveals that she had postponed it again and again, and now there are very few days remaining. A look of concern crosses his face as he asks her if she is really prepared to live alone. This self-confident version of Kyoko announces that she can look after herself just fine. When she wants to assure Tuma that she isn't joking, she writes a message on the parfait coaster nearby. Back in her house, she stares at the neat handwriting that says she would make it. She silently holds the coaster in her hands, thinking about how self-assured she used to be and how now she has lost so much of her confidence. Kyoko promises herself that she would do better, and vows to keep the coaster close to herself as a reminder of what she is capable of. Eventually, the day of the move arrives. A minor miracle that Kyoko has finally managed to clean up her place as well as complete the packing. Turns out that she can really do anything that she puts her mind to. Keeping some final things into her bag, she tells herself to hurry as Tuma would be there to pick her up soon. Speak of the devil as Tuma pulls into the driveway right around that moment. He exits the car and is about to message his girlfriend of his arrival when an elderly couple comes up and greets him. He recognizes them as Kyoko's neighbors. They are aware of what a close bond the two share and admit that they know that she is moving in with him. Tuma is taken aback about how they have noticed this and if other people are talking about it too. However, the couple are really kind and show their happiness that she is moving in with Tuma. The old lady then reveals that Kyoko has gone through some really tough times and that when she was in a university, a group of seniors assaulted her. Listening from the window, Kyoko immediately panics. She had not told her boyfriend about it, as she did not want him to think of her any differently and consider her weak. The couple further says that the incident was so severe that arrests were made, and to this day, Kyoko is scared to walk down the street alone. Suddenly, they notice that Tuma has not said anything, and realize that he is not aware of this bit of information. They try to cover up, but the words are already out of their mouths. However, Tuma's reaction is completely the opposite of what they expected. With a cheerful smile, he says that Kyoko is working on herself and that he would support her on every step of the way. The couple quickly agree with him. They finally walk away, and Tuma waves them goodbye. He then calls up to Kyoko, announcing that he is here and that they should get a move on, otherwise they would be late. After wiping away her tears, she opens up her window, and with the brightest of smiles, informs him that she is almost done, and apologizes for keeping him waiting. It is the first day of Tuma and Kyoko sharing the same house, and it feels like she is living a dream. Comfortable in light clothing, she follows him to the door and wishes him to have a good day at the office. Aw, almost like an old married couple. With all the packing done, Kyoko realizes that she is now alone in the house and has nothing to do so she spends the rest of the day lazing around and watching TV. Suddenly, she has a minor crisis, as she remembers that her boyfriend is hard at work at his job while she is loafing around at home and being of no use. Remembering how she had tried to make food in the past and failed miserably, she's determined to do much better this time. She has never shown Tuma too much of her feminine side, so it would be a really pleasant surprise for him if he came home tired and saw food already ready at the table. However, to her dismay, she finds the fridge completely empty. Not to be beat down by this unfortunate change in her plans, she puts on her helmet and goes to the nearest grocery store to purchase the items she required. Hours later, Tuma returns home and announces that he is really exhausted. The strange sight of Kyoko curled up on the carpet meets his eyes. Her hair is even messier than usual, and her eyes look horrified. Upon his questioning, she reveals that she had tried to cook dinner for them and had messed up horribly again. Looking at the pork that was cooked twice, Tuma comments on its strange color. This is enough to push Kyoko over the edge, and she declares that she is useless and is now returning back to her parents' house. He pulls her back and tells her not to be too hasty. Taking a helping of the bacon with rice and beer, he swallows a bite. To her surprise, he reveals that even the color of it is weird. The strong flavor of the bacon goes amazingly with the other two. Tuma's final verdict is that Kyoko's attempt at cooking is not that bad after all. His appreciation fills her with relief, and she assures him that as long as he believes in her, she would improve herself. He is only too happy to give her further words of affirmation. Talk about couple goals. Kyoko has now started a job at a store known as Monster Mart 24. Wearing a black mask and the green shirt that shop employees are usually identified by, she thinks of Tuma and that he is probably asleep at home by now. Fiddling her fingers, she thinks about how she has now taken up four nights in a row to pick up her own weight in the house. The downside of this was that she hardly got to see her boyfriend anymore now. Their routines are now completely opposite, as when Tuma returns home, Kyoko is going for her shift, and when she gets off, his office time has just begun. She regrets taking up the night shift, but has no choice but to put on a brave face and continue her job. Scanning items on the scanner for the late night customers, she forces herself to be cheery and tell them to visit again. After all, the hourly wage rate is good enough for her to make quite the earning. After an exhausting night, Kyoko returns home the next morning to Tuma, setting his tie and preparing to go out. 
She greets him with a tired good morning and is about to make herself breakfast when she sees that it is already prepared for her. The presentation is not too good, as the half-boiled egg is cut up from the edges and seems to have mushed together with the sausages. It seems to be slightly overdone as well. However, ever the pining girlfriend, Kyoko cannot believe her eyes that such a loving gesture could be done for her. She thanks him shyly, and with a grin, he explains that he feels that he should be making some food for her as well. Even though it did not turn out as well as he wanted, he vows that he would keep trying till it's perfect almost word for word to what she said a few days back. He then takes his leave and she wishes him a good day. Appreciating the effort Tuma did for her, Kyoko was determined to pay him back by preparing dinner at night. One morning, Kyoko was lazing around in bed. Having just got comfy in the blanket, she is frustrated to get a message from Tuma to take out the garbage. There is no time for her to change, as there is a specific time when the garbage men come to take out the trash, and if she does not give them the bags by then, the trash will just pile up until next week. So, wearing a low neck pink crop top, she rushes to the trash can and pulls out the black bags filled with their gunk. Kyoko was a former elite athlete, and she showed all her previous physical prowess by running after the garbage truck at full speed. Middle schoolers who saw her could only catch a pink flash with her more than obvious physique. Much to her relief, Kyoko manages to catch up to the truck and hand them the trash bags. However, rumors of her run spread all over the middle school as the students who saw her went and told their classmates. Unbeknownst to her, she became known as the busty pink leopard all over her hometown. Nothing like igniting the romance in a relationship by going on a long drive together. Having engaged in an intimate and tiring activity the night before, it is quite the surprise that our protagonist and his girlfriend are able to wake up early the next morning. After days of hardly seeing each other due to their opposite routines, the two finally have a day off together, and decide to make the most out of it. So, without any end destination in mind, Tuma takes the wheel and Kyoko becomes the passenger princess and they hit the road. However, once Tuma starts driving, he understands how confusing it can be to just keep traveling without going towards somewhere. So, he has the oh-so-brilliant idea of taking a random road that they have never ever seen, and pray to the gods that they end up somewhere entertaining. Even dumber is Kyoko, who agrees with their boyfriend's absurd plan. Love really makes one blind. It makes you wonder how many brain cells the two must share because what they are about to do is the basic plot of every horror movie. The road they take is pretty much abandoned, but the two hardly have a care in the world. Kyoko comments about how hungry she is while Tuma replies that he would look for a cafe so that his beloved could find something to eat. Maybe along with her anxiety and stress, Kyoko has also lost her common sense. A few hours later, well after dusk has fallen, the two finally come to their senses when it starts to pour cats and dogs. Tuma comments about how far they have driven away from civilization, as mountains can be seen in the distance. The rain does not seem to be letting up, and Tuma suggests the first sensible thing of the day. He asks Kyoko if they should turn back around before they get lost even further, or end up in an even worse situation considering how slippery the roads have become. Just as they are making up their minds, they come across a roadside station. These are something like parking spaces, which also offer local specialties on sale. The two come to a decision that they should take a break considering how far they have driven and how much it is raining. They exit the car and enter the shop. To their amazement, although multiple stalls surround them, all of them are only filled with pickles. This particular countryside's chosen delicacy must be that as various sorts of the tangy vegetables are lined up on the stalls. The two try different samples of the pickles, which Tuma exclaims are quite tasty, while Kyoko thinks they are too sharp. Once done with taste testing, they move on and explore the other parts of the roadside station. Due to the humidity of the shop, Kyoko's already messy pink hair has slowly risen to a chaotic mass of pink strands. The couple follow strange crunching sounds and come across a hot foot bath which is already heated up, almost as if it is aware of their arrival. Rolling up his jeans, Tuma places his feet into the relaxing hot water, while Kyoko's short dress is already up to her knees so she needs to make no adjustments. Nothing like enjoying a nice relaxing foot bath in the middle of nowhere in a strange roadside station. Tuma catches sight of the building next to the station through the window, and realizes that it is a hotel. He points this out to his girlfriend who agrees with him. Quite the keen observer, Kyoko reads out a sign that says there is an underground spring beneath the station and the hotel which is providing both the building and the station with hot water. Tuma gives it some thought and suggests that they both spend the night in the hotel since they are both off from work the next day and the unpredictable weather might make it impossible for them to make it home safely. Kyoko is taken aback as she'd only expected a single day trip, but agrees. However, she also reminds her boyfriend that they do not have a reservation in the hotel, so the management might not let them stay. The solution to her problem presents itself when they check the vacancy list and multiple rooms are still available to rent. The two book one night with relief, and Kyoko comments about how it's fortunate that they stumbled to the countryside, where even though it is the weekend, a lot of vacancies are still available. The two are excited to see that their dorm is fashioned in the typical Japanese style. The wooden floorboards and sliding doors really bring back old memories for the both of them. 
Kyoko makes a valid point that the calming atmosphere here goes well with the rainy weather outdoors. Suddenly, Tuma starts talking in a hushed voice and informs his girlfriend that there is one mandatory act that must be performed at the beginning in a new hotel room. He says this while stripping off his clothes and Kyoko can hardly hide the blush rushing up to her face. With a stutter, she asks him to elaborate while imagining all the steamy things they could do together. However, ever the innocent young lad, Tuma presents himself in a comfortable blue yukata and gets his girlfriend a matching kimono. Still blushing, Kyoko says that such relaxing clothing really sets the mood. The rain continues to pour through the night as Kyoko is unable to sleep a wink. She clutches the pillow really tightly, almost as if she's in pain or afraid to let go.